In this tutorial, I'm going to work my way through question 11 from our lab manual. The first thing we need to do is read the question and understand what is going on so that we can write a null hypothesis. When I'm writing a null hypothesis, I always think about what is being tested. What is the thing that we are changing? What is the thing that is staying the same? In this situation, we have a pesticide spray that we are testing the effectiveness of. That is the thing we're testing. We're testing how effective it is on different tree species. And we're measuring that by counting the number of caterpillars we find on those tree species. This means that our null hypothesis is there is no difference in the effectiveness of the pesticide spray. HO is there is no difference. The null hypothesis is always there is no difference. What are we testing? We're testing there is no difference in the effectiveness of the spray at controlling caterpillar populations on specifically they mention sugar maple and poplar trees. This bothers me about this particular question because sugar maple is a specific species and poplar is a whole group of species. But that is the parameters we are given. So with this information, we can then make our table. We have two categories, sugar maples and poplars. Then we'll need a total as well. And then we'll need observed and expected. We found that 80 of the maples had no caterpillars and that 58 of the poplars had no caterpillars, which comes to a total of 138. The next thing we need to do is find the expected. The expected equals the total divided by the number of categories. Now remember, this is the expected for one dimensional. We are currently doing a one dimensional equation. In this case, our total is 138, and there are two categories, sugar maples and poplars, which means our expected value is 69 which in the question, the manufacturer gives an expected value of 70% effectiveness. So this is very similar to what the manufacturer has recommended. So we're going to take that and put it into our chi-squared equation. The sum of means we're going to take this part and add it to itself. How many times do we add it to itself? We look for pairs. We have two variables, two sets of numbers, so we're adding this together twice. 80 minus 69 over 69, 58 minus 69 over 69. Now this equals 11 squared and this is negative 11 squared. This is really common for our numerators to be in positive negative pairs like this. And we get the same numerator because squaring a negative makes a positive. That is pretty much the reason why that squaring is there, to try and get rid of negatives. This means that our chi squared is 3.5. Calculated chi squared equals 3.5, but we still need to find out critical 
chi squared. What does it equal? To find critical chi squared, we have two different things, so we need to find our degrees of freedom. So in a one-dimensional equation, degrees of freedom equals the number of categories minus one. This is similar to the t-test. Remember, the degrees of freedom in the t-test was n minus one. So now instead of an n, we just have the number of categories. So in our case, we have two categories minus one, so our degrees of freedom equals one. The other thing we need to know is alpha, which is always 0 0.05. That is a standardized number. On our critical table of values, we see our column of alpha of 0 0.05, and we have a degrees of freedom of 1. So our critical chi-squared is 3.841. Remember, this is our critical table of values, which means this is the critical cutoff point. If our calculated chi is greater than this, we reject our null hypothesis and there is a difference. If our calculated chi-square is less than this, then we accept our null hypothesis and there is no difference. Critical chi-squared is greater than calculated chi-squared. Therefore, we accept our null hypothesis. 3.5 is less than 3.8. The calculated chi-square has not crossed that critical threshold, so we accept our null hypothesis. And we write our concluding statement, that there is no difference, because we accepted this null. Basically, your concluding statement is your original null when you accept it.